Welcome back. We are two weeks into the NFL preseason, which means one week remains. It's tough to get a real feel for how teams are going to play starters because they they had like the beat of their drum when it had four weeks in the preseason. Since it is lower down to three weeks, every team just plays at its own pace. Like Cincinnati hasn't had the starters touch the field yet. Other teams like Mahomes and Daniel Jones and the Giants and Trevor Lawrence and stuff, some of them have new offenses and they want to try out new pieces and make sure the offense is flowing before the regular season starts. So what we've been doing in our draft guide, which is up to date through all of my takeaways and recaps from week two of the preseason, which the easiest way to get the draft guide is going to prizepicks, prizepicks.com. Download the prizepicks app. Link is in the description. If you deposit $10 or more on there, okay, one, you're getting a 100% deposit match on prizepicks for you to fucking rip off some, some revenue making parlays on their app throughout the rest of the preseason. But two, you get our draft guide absolutely free by doing that. It has our week two, week three preseason takeaways. It has our season long rankings. It has everything you need for your draft, which is quickly coming up. So today's video. We are going to discuss seven players through two weeks of the preseason. I think we'll be going from zeros to heroes in fantasy football this year. They're younger players who haven't yet broken out, but it's looking more and more like they are going to have massive opportunities in their respective offenses because, again, that is what you look for in the preseason. You look at the starting quarterback on the field, that tells you what the coach is thinking how they want their offense to be run in terms of personnel, and you go based off of that. So the first player on this list should be no surprise. I've been talking about him for like six straight months, and it's Damian Pierce. What happens in preseason is just as important as what does not happen in preseason, okay? So this previous game, while Marlon Mack and Rex Burkhead suited up, Damian Pierce simply did not. That is what we call the starter treatment. This fourth round rookie running back has come in and absolutely seized the job. I'm not going to say it's overly impressive because it's Marlon Mack and we haven't seen him do shit since he came back from the Achilles tear and Rex Burkhead. And again, I'm not going to get over my fucking skis here because we are still seeing the running back of the Houston Texans be in a terrible situation. Bad offensive line, bad offense, whatever. Pierce is wildly talented. I, his ceiling is for sure capped, right? The sentiment I've been kind of preaching all offseason that you're getting a dude that you were able to draft up to this point. He was like a ninth to 14th round pick, depending on when you were starting to draft and still will be a lot for a lot of you guys in like normal friends and family leagues. Now he's going to end up being like a seventh, eighth round pick. And listen, I, I, I want Pierce on my fucking teams. You're drafting a dude at like RB3-4 that I think is going to end up finishing as a top 18, top 20 back. Does that move the needle? No, but it's a great fucking value piece that you get 20 spots lower than where he's going to finish. Damian Pierce is looking like the starter for the Houston Texans. Probably starts as a committee, but he will be the dude at the end of the year we look back on and saying, I can't wait to draft this motherfucker going into 2023. We have another rookie out of this class who went around before Damian Pierce did. That's Brian Robinson, the running back in Washington. Third round pick, and we talked about Antonio Gibson's downfall, his demise all summer, but more importantly, last preseason game where he started, fumbled it, and then boom, he was delegated to the backups. Now, in week two of preseason, Antonio Gibson was the first running back onto the field for Washington because he was the kick returner. This man is playing special teams now. Brian Robinson was the first running back on the field with the actual starters. Once Carson Wentz stepped on the field for the first play, it was Robinson. Carry, carry, target. Robinson, as we see it, as we know it right now, is the starter for the Washington Commander. Stop drafting Gibson inside the first double-digit rounds. I don't care that you thought he looked good at Memphis. I don't care that you might have owned him last year when you had a two-touchdown game. I don't care what his combine performance was. The Washington Commanders are speaking extremely loudly and extremely clearly about who the starting running back is right now. It's Brian Robinson. It is Brian Robinson. Gibson got a few plays here and there. He was still in when Taylor Heineke came in as the backup. You're going to say in the comments, this is a preseason overreaction. Like, no, they're literally fucking telling us who the starting running back is right now. Who is the running back on the field when Carson Wentz is the quarterback? It's Brian Robinson right now. J.D. McKissick is still going to eat up third down work, but Brian Robinson looks like he's going to get a lot of goal line work. They came out afterwards and said, oh, we want to get Antonio Gibson in space. That's great. You can do that three or four times a game. Get him a screen. Get him running some routes or whatever. Get him on kick return. But it's Robinson's backfield to lose right now because they don't have the trust in Gibson. Gibson fumbles the ball. 
doesn't read his holes right. Robinson is the opposite of that. He's trustworthy. He's going to get a bulk of the carries here. He's also a good pass catcher. We saw him get some targets in the first game. Wouldn't be surprised if he ripped off, you know, 35, 40, 45 catches as the early down run there in Washington. So he's a dude that you're probably going to be able to get in the 12th, 13th, 14th round of your family and friends leagues because everyone's still looking at Antonio Gibson. I'm telling you, please, if you've ever trusted me with anything, it's do not draft Gibson and look towards his teammate, Brian Robinson. Next up, we've got Isaiah McKenzie. He's someone I've been getting louder and louder and louder about because he has seen seized up the starting slot wide receiver role over Jamison Crowder. It's very obvious. He played every single snap with the ones in Josh Allen in the slot in three wide receiver in 11 personnel. Okay. It's not Jamison Crowder's job to lose. It is McKenzie's job to lose. And we've seen how valuable the slot wide receiver in a Bills offense could be under Josh Allen. Just look at Cole Beasley. Just look at Emmanuel Sanders. Since 2017, Josh Allen has the single highest target rate to slot wide receivers. That is a five-year sample size, 28.6%. Now, Jamison Crowder will get on the field. They will run plenty of four wide receiver sets. The Buffalo offense does this often. But when it's three wide receivers, it's McKenzie. We even saw in the preseason game, once Jameson Crowder got onto the field, we saw McKenzie move to the outside for a couple snaps. So I think they look at him as a versatile player. I want as many pieces attached to this offense as humanely possible. So Isaiah McKenzie should be a target in double-digit rounds for every one of your drafts. And it's hard not to continue to beat on the Romeo Dobbs fucking drum. At this point, I mean, this dude, all he does is make plays. All we heard all summer was how amazing he's looked to practice. Came in week one of preseason. Had a nice touchdown catch, came in week two, dominated, dominated the target share. Obviously, Rodgers has not been playing. Rodgers has came out publicly and said he wants the starters to be Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins, or Randall Cobb because he trusts them. But they'll have no choice but to to put this talented rookie wide receiver out onto the field if he's going to be a playmaker because they are sorely lacking any sort of explosion, explosiveness, and playmaking ability in this offense outside of the running backs right now. So Romeo Dobbs is a dude whose ADP might skyrocket in your draft. And listen, there's a point where I'm like, okay, if he's a seventh, eighth round pick, probably don't draft the dude. But I think it is a little bit telling here. Here's some insider information that some of you guys might have already. But we hosted the Sleeper Bowl last week in our office, and in the Sleeper Bowl, we were drafting against A.J. Dillon. A.J. Dillon literally had a team. We had him onto the channel. We were talking about him a little bit. We are talking with him for a little bit, and he drafted Romeo Dobbs in the ninth round. It was either the ninth or tenth round of our draft, all right? He went bike-to-bike -bike picks, Aaron Rodgers, Romeo Dobbs. That should probably tell you something. He's at camp every single day. He's seeing this dude operate. He's seeing this dude win. There's something there. There is something there, people. There's also something there with Khalil Fookin Herbert. He has played every single snap with Justin Fields this preseason. Every single one. Justin Fields was on the field for like 13 snaps the first game, 18 snaps the second game. Every single snap that Justin Fields took so far in the preseason, Khalil Herbert has been the running back behind him. Fantastic runner. This does also point to the fact that David Montgomery is the starting running back here. There's been no argument there, but they trust Herbert clearly so far ahead of anything else they have in that backfield. They've got no choice but to play him this year. Herbert's going to get a lot of run. And I know he had a little bit of a scare a couple practices ago. He was carted off or some shit, but he was fine. He was back at practice the next day. Not worried about it. Khalil Herbert will be a piece of this offense and one of the single highest value handcuffs in all of fantasy football. So Herbert is exactly who he thought he was, and he's clearly going to have a role in this offense. I still like Njoku, man. I still like David Njoku. He is playing on every snap in the preseason. He will be with Jacoby Brissett, obviously, which is a little bit of a problem, but they don't have playmakers in this offense. And uh, they spoke loud and clearly with the bag that they gave him this offseason in the sense that he is going to be one of their biggest playmakers, right? It was like $50 million, $58 million, I believe. He's a top five paid tight end in the NFL right now. They're going to force him into a playmaker role. He's not going to have a choice. He's going to get the targets. He's going to get the opportunities. He's going to get the screenplays. He's going to get the shots down the seam. And he's a dude that's going off the board at like tight end 16, 17, 18 right now. I will be taking a lot of shots on David Njoku. I also like Kyle Phillips, rookie slot wide receiver, fifth round pick in Tennessee. Tennessee is sorely fucking lacking playmakers too, right? That's a theme of this list. That's why opportunities come because these teams don't have anybody good on their roster. Robert Woods is old and coming back from an ACL tear. So while he will be the wide receiver one here in Tennessee, who knows if he's able to withstand that the entire year? Does he come out hot and then slow down? Does he re-injure it because he's coming back like very, very soon? This was a late season injury. You can talk about Traylon Burks all you want. He hasn't done a fucking thing this offseason. He's playing into the fourth quarter of all the preseason games. Yeah, you guys love to fucking yell about like he was open on this one play. Okay, let's start to fucking count into the stats and the production in a shitty preseason game against backups that didn't even catch the fucking ball. He just happened to be open on a on a fucking film you guys are out of control 
out of control. You'll push your narratives any way you want. Traylon Burks just ain't it right now. He ain't it this year. Stop drafting him in the single digit rounds. I'm not drafting Kyle Phillips over him, but I'd rather draft Kyle Phillips where he's going off the board, which is like nowhere. Phillips has got a lot of Hunter Renfro to him. He's a great route runner, makes guys miss in space, and I think he's going to end up being a PPR factor down the stretch. He might not have a ceiling. He might end up being one of those guys where he just continuously go like Renfro early on in his career. Where like every single week, it was just like four for 55, four for 60. You just know what you're getting week in and week out. He could be a low-end flex play, PPR leagues. He's a dude that we're going to be very, very high on come next year. Kyle Phillips, don't forget the fucking name. Don't forget any of these names. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to go to Prize Picks and use our promo code BDGE to get our draft guide plus a 100% deposit match. But do not, most importantly, forget about Damian Pierce, Brian Robinson, Isaiah McKenzie, Khalil Herbert, Romeo Dobbs, David Njoku, and Kyle Phillips in the later rounds of your fantasy drafts this year good luck if you got drafts ripping off um within the next few days we'll be here for you all season rest of the off season i love y'all and i'm out